Hello everyone, welcome to Curious Drive. In this video, I'm going to talk about async and await keywords in C Sharp. I made this video for people who are just getting started with C Sharp and uh, they want to use these keywords to make their programs run faster, how they can use this keyword to make their program more efficiently so that they get completed quickly. For demo, I'm going to use breakfast example. This is my favorite example. You'll find this example on Microsoft Docs too. I'll put the link in the video description. So in this example, we'll see how we can prepare a breakfast in synchronous manner and asynchronous manner. And we'll see the difference. We'll see how long it takes when we prepare a breakfast in synchronous way and then in asynchronous way. So when you're preparing the breakfast synchronous way, then you'll perform each task separately. You'll wait for each task to finish and then you'll jump on to the next task. Let's take a look at this frying eggs example. So you'll start frying eggs, you'll wait for the eggs to get fried, then you'll move on to the next step, which is frying bacon. You'll wait for the bacon to get fried and then you'll move on to the next task, which is toast bread. And then you'll go to putting jam on the bread, right? So instead of performing each task separately, what you can do is you can perform this task concurrently. First step is to figure out which task you can perform concurrently. If you look at frying eggs, frying bacon and toasting bread, these tasks are not dependent on each other so that you can perform this task separately, concurrently. But if you take a look at this toasting bread and putting jam on the bread, these tasks are dependent on each other. So you cannot perform this task concurrently. And that's what I've done in this image here. So I have poured coffee. Frying eggs, frying bacon, and toasting bread, I'm performing at the same time so that I can save some time. And then once I'm done with toasting the bread, then I'm putting the jam on the bread, and then I'm pouring juice to finish my breakfast. Let's use this demo example in a console application and see how we can use async and await keywords to run this program asynchronously and save some time. So currently it takes 15 seconds. I've put minutes here to make sense out of this demo. So we'll try to drop this down to six seconds and see if we can run this program asynchronously. So let's jump into the demo. Let's take a look into the code that I've written for this demo. This is a console application. You'll find this code on GitHub. The link is in the video description. This code is performing the same steps that we looked into our slides. It's pouring coffee, it's frying eggs, frying bacon, toasting bread, applying butter and jam on the toast, and then pouring orange juice. And then finally, we're printing breakfast is ready. We'll look into these methods, but these methods are returning objects like coffee, egg, bacon, toast. You can find the classes here in the same project. And these classes are empty. They are not doing anything. The reason why we're using them in this example is because I want to show you, you can't return objects when you're using async and await keywords. So whenever we start performing this steps, I am also noting down the start time. I'm taking datetime.now. And once I'm done performing these steps, when the breakfast is ready, I am noting the end time. And finally, I'm printing the difference of end time and start time in seconds and printing them in and showing them as minutes so that it makes sense out of this demo. So that we know how long it took to perform these steps, right? Let's jump into these methods and see how they are. So the first method is to pouring coffee. We are not waiting for anything to happen. We are pouring coffee. There isn't any wait time for this step. But if you take a look into fry eggs, we are cracking eggs and then we are starting to cook eggs. And this is where we are waiting for eggs to get cooked. And this is the wait time that we can avoid 
if we run this task concurrently. Same thing is happening with bacon. We are waiting for one site to get cooked for three seconds, and then we are waiting another site to get cooked for three seconds. So there is also wait time for this prime bacon stack. And then we have toasting bread, which also takes three seconds. And then we have apply jam, which doesn't take any time. Applying butter, we can't wait for any of these tasks. And then finally pouring orange juice. But like I mentioned, we can perform this frying eggs, frying bacon, and toasting bread methods, steps, concurrently because they're not dependent on each other. If you take a look at this toasting bread, applying jam and butter on the toast, they're dependent on the toast. So you can't perform them concurrently. But toasting bread, frying bacon, and frying eggs is something that you can perform concurrently. Before I make changes into this code, let's first run this program and see how long it takes to perform these steps. For that, I have opened this folder in PowerShell. I'm going to run .NET run to see how long it takes. So it will compile the program. It will start pouring coffee. It will start cooking eggs, which takes six seconds. And then it will start cooking bacon. Uh, one side takes three seconds, another side takes three seconds. And then we are putting bread in the toaster, which takes three seconds. And finally, once uh, the toaster is done toasting the bread, we are applying jam and butter on the toast. And then finally, we are pouring orange juice. Orange juice is ready. And then finally, breakfast is ready. It took 15 seconds, but I'm printing in minutes to make sense. Now let's go ahead and use async and await keywords to run this faster. For that, I'm gonna go to my fry eggs. We'll first make this method as asynchronous. For that, I'm gonna use async keyword here, async keyword, and we'll return task of eggs. That means we'll return this as an operation, not as eggs. So we can handle this operation concurrently. And then whenever you make a method asynchronous, it's convention to put async word in front of it so that the developer who are calling this method, they know that this is an asynchronous method and it has to be awaited. Now, once we are using this async keyword, we can use await keyword in our method. So this is the step where we are blocking a thread, right? So we can use await keyword so that this thread can perform other tasks too. So I'm going to remove this wait method. And instead of waiting, I'm going to await so that the thread can perform other tasks too. And you can see that the warning message went away too, because if you're using async, you'll have to use and await in the method wherever you're making this method as asynchronous. Let's go ahead and perform the same steps for other methods. So I'm gonna make this as async. This is gonna be task bacon. And this is gonna be fry bacon async. And when if, wherever we are waiting, I'm gonna await so that our thread can perform some other tasks. And then same thing I'm going to do with toasting bread. Here I'm going to use task of toasting bread. And I'm going to say this is an async method. And wherever we are waiting, I would like to await so that my thread can perform other tasks. Now our program will start throwing errors because these methods are not there anymore. These are fry eggs async, and then fry bacon async, and toast bread async. Now this is still throwing an error because it returns task of egg, not egg. It returns task of bacon, not just bacon, 
and it returns task of toast, not just toast. And you can handle this by putting an await keyword here and we'll, we'll change this later on in the video. But I want to get rid of this error so that I can at least call these methods. It is still throwing error because we need to make sure that the main method is asynchronous so that we can use these await keywords. You cannot directly use await keywords in method and the main method should return task, right? Now, what we did here, we made our program asynchronous. We're still not using the full potential of these keywords, but we made our program such a way that our cook who's preparing the breakfast can listen to other tasks. It can listen to some other orders and perform some other task if he has to or she has to. If I run this program, it's going to run fine, but it's going to take the same time that it took before. It will perform all the steps sequentially like it did before, and it's going to take 15 seconds to perform the task. But what we did, we made our program asynchronous so that if it has to listen, it can listen to other tasks and perform those tasks. So you can see that it took 15 minutes. I'm going to track this here. It took 15 minutes. So even if you use async and await keyword, it doesn't mean that you are using to their full potential. It means that you need to find out things that you can perform independently and perform those tasks separately. Now let's go ahead and use this async and await keywords to its full potential. I'm going to um, perform these tasks. So we are awaiting this task. I'm going to call these methods concurrently and then I'll await this task whenever I want them to be completed, when I think they could get completed. So the way I can do this is by saying that var task eggs. And then I'm going to call this method. I'm not going to await it. That means that I'm waiting for it to get completed. I don't want it to wait for it. So I'm going to cut this code and put it here. And same thing I'm going to do for bacon and toast. So I'm going to say this is task bacon. And I'm going to call this method. And for task toast, I'm going to call this method, right? Now, what we'll do, we'll wait for these methods whenever we think the first task is going to get completed. So I'm going to await these tasks later on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that you can, this is where I'm performing them concurrently. And this is where I'm waiting for the results. This is where I'm going to await for them to be done. And then I'm gonna, this spelling mistake, so I'm gonna put it toast. And then I'm gonna put this here. And out of these tasks, toasting the bread is the fastest. So I'm gonna put it on top so that that task can get completed faster. And then I will fry eggs and bacon because these tasks are independent. We don't really need to perform them sequentially. Now let's go ahead and run our program and see how fast it runs. So now I'm going to do a .NET run and it's going to perform the tasks concurrently. You can see that it's not performing these tasks sequentially anymore. And it's going to get done in six seconds and it printed six minutes. I'm going to open the before version in a different PowerShell window here so that we can see the difference. So if I open this PowerShell here and have this here, I'm going to say CLS and do a .NET run. This is the before version of the code and it's still going to take 15 seconds. And you can see this, how sequentially it's performing and it's going to take 15 seconds, I'm going to print 15 minutes because breakfast will take minutes to prepare. And you can see that how slow this one gets performed and how fast this one got performed. 
So this is how you can use async and await keywords in your program and run your programs faster, more efficiently, and get things done quicker. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.